Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about the risk of x-rays, CAT scans, and dental x-rays. Now, a CAT scan is, is multiple slices of an x-ray to see a, a body part sort of in a more clear way. Most doctors don't think that there's any risk in a CAT scan. In one report, only 9% of emergency room doctors thought there was any risk whatsoever in a CAT scan. There have been over 72 million CAT scans done every year in America, and many experts believe they're responsible for over 29,000 cancers. In a major study in 2013 by the British Journal of Medicine, they actually followed a million people from birth into young adulthood, and they found that the people who had the most CAT scan had a CAT scans had a 24% increased risk of developing cancer compared to those who had the fewest amount of CAT scans. And the problem is, is that these, the more CAT scans you have when you're younger, it doesn't seem to go away. Like in five years, you're free and clear. It's not sort of like that. It's the problem and the risk continues and sort of lingers throughout your life. In one study, in that same study, when people who had more CAT scans when they were younger had a 35% higher risk in the first four years following the exposure, in 25% higher risk at five and nine years following the exposure, and a 14% risk 10 to 14 years following the exposure. So even way down the road, we still carry this risk, which is sort of sad news. And, it, and the x-rays seem to have a tendency to damage our DNA. And so there are things, of course, in nature that can protect your DNA and repair your DNA. And there's lots of really good science behind that. Herbs like turmeric, uh, spirulina, making a lemon balm or melissa tea are shown to be uh, really good. One of the Ayurvedic herbs called shilajit has been shown to support the repair and protect you against you know, the damage of x-rays. And I've written a lot about and the science behind those, those DNA protectants um, in the article associated with this video. So please, you know, definitely check that out. What was really interesting um, is that many of the doctors prescribe these x-rays out of fear from a lawsuit. So, and since only 9% of doctors really think that they're, they're dangerous, we sort of have to take the ball into our own court and ask doctors, why are we prescribing this? Do I really need it? What's going to be the diagnostic or the therapy, the treatment plan that's gonna change based on this CAT scan? So make sure you're not just doing that. 44% of those x-rays or the CAT scans in one report were considered to be unnecessary. So you really have to sort of fend for yourself now that we have some pretty good hard science that this is a problem. Dental x-rays, as much as every dentist I've ever been to will tell you that there's zero risk of a dental x-ray. It's nothing more than taking an airplane flight. Well, in one report in 2012 in the journal Cancer, they found that people who get annual dental preventative x-rays are twice as likely to develop a benign brain tumor called a meningioma, which of course, okay, well, it's benign, but you still need brain surgery to get rid of it. So it's, you know, and most dentists won't actually, you know, agree that that's the case. And so I actually wrote in the article associated with this video, what the, the researchers said based on the dental x-rays. And I think it might not be a bad idea to print that out and have that with you next time you go to your dentist because they're so emphatic about getting these x-rays. And here's what they said. There is little, this is from the researchers from the 2012 Journal of Cancer, the citations in the article here. There's little evidence to support the use of dental x-rays in search of occult pathologies in asymptomatic patients with no symptoms or routine dental radiographs at preset pre intervals for all patients, like annual x-rays. Although dental x-rays are an important tool in well-selected patients when you have got a problem, efforts to moderate exposure of ionizing radiation to the head is likely to be a benefit of the patients and the healthcare providers alike. So this is what they said. There's a twi two times risk for that. I sort of really believe that we need to lobby for these dentists to kind of dial it back. I'll tell you a quick story that I had. I had a dental x-ray and, and um, 
they told me I had to have it and I'm not a big fan of getting dental x-rays either. And then when they saw something on, on the dental x-ray and they went with their little poker and they found a little sticky spot in my tooth. And I'm going, well, I remember back in the old days, the dentist would actually spend the time to stick that little poker into every little tooth and make sure they didn't find any cavities. And there it was, all I did, needed to do was a really, really good exam and it was right there. You know, so have we lost that skill for the dentist or have, did I have, they don't have the time to do that? So we just go to the x-ray and now we look at the risk that we're taking. You know, like, like I said, like it says here in the article, I don't think that you should avoid them like the plague, but it's a cumulative kind of a thing. If you had a lot of CAT scans and a lot of x-rays and a lot of dental x-rays, you know, then you want to think of ways you can mitigate and moderate your exposure. Please read this extremely fascinating article. Definitely learn about some of the herbs and things you can do to protect your DNA from the exposure and hopefully do some repair as well in the article associated with this video. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Deyard. Hi, did you like this video? Do you like our content here at LifeSpa? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash John Deyard right here and get this valuable content every week in your inbox. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.